Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself and Marta. Just a quick heads up before we dive in. It is really hot right now in the UK, so I do have all my windows open. Apologies in advance for anything that makes it past my noise filters. But let's dive straight into our first topic, which is regarding NVIDIA's Lovelace. Now, I'm sure you guys have become very familiar with the name Greymon55 over the last couple of weeks. They have been very active in the leaker scene. And now they have something to share about, you guessed it, Ada Lovelace, which is expected to be the next addition to NVIDIA's line of graphics cards, or RTX 40. Now, I'm sure you all know that there has been a lot of chatter regarding NVIDIA's roadmap in terms of the order that we will see things releasing. There was a tweet some time ago from Kapiti 7 Kimi where basically they said that Hopper, which was based on an MCM design, had been delayed and that a new roadmap was going to be drawn up instead. And basically they were responding to a user basically stating that Ada Lovelace is definitely the next generation gaming card and the entire project plan has been finalised and will not change. Basically the user was stating maybe you know Lovelace could potentially be skipped if RDNA 3 is as good as AMD said, but as 3dcenter.org very aptly put, it's just not going to happen. They put in so much money at this point, it's just, they won't. It's just really that simple. But that's not the most interesting thing that Greymon had to say. They actually had some stuff to say regarding the nodes that we're going to be seeing for RTX 40. And responding to Sebastian who wondered if it's going to be TSMC 5NM, Greymon did indeed confirm that it is the case. They said, quote, Ada TSMC 5NM 100%, but I'm not sure if it's N5 or N5P yet. So... We know it is TSMC's 5NM No, we just don't know which version of it, basically. Now, obviously, as with any rumours, leaks, etc., a pinch of salt TM is definitely required. Now, if this helps put this one into the thumbs up camp, uh, this is backed up by a slightly older tweet of Kapiti 7 Kimmy from back in June. They're responding to a user by the name of I'm Law, who is basically saying that we could probably see 5NM Samsung, and Kapiti just said, agree, but TSMC N5. Long story short, we know that it's 5NM, we know that it's probably TSMC, but we don't know what version of it it is going to be, N5 or N5P. I think this next upcoming generation is going to be really, really interesting, to be honest. Obviously, we've been hearing a lot, and I do mean a lot of promising stuff regarding RDNA 3. In fact, yesterday uh, we discussed how, according to the latest leaks and rumours for RDNA 3, we are going to be seeing an overhaul of the compute units and architecture for Navi 31, and we're going to be some seeing some, excuse me, significant increases to shader power, and obviously all of the rumours and chatter regarding uh, RDNA 3 is that it could actually topple NVIDIA in terms of rasterization performance, but we would see NVIDIA still pull ahead in terms of ray tracing. But obviously, this is leaks, rumours at, at this point. We should obviously wait and see. Pinch of salt TM, you get the drill. Now, in terms of release date, release window, things like that for Lovelace, we don't ha obviously have an exact date or anything yet, but all the leaks seem to be in agreement that we're going to be seeing it by the end of 2022. But honestly, I'm just looking forward to seeing what both NVIDIA and AMD have in store for us. Both of their approaches... Lovelace, RDNA 3, sound really interesting. And RDNA 3 especially sounds like it's going to bring some significant changes to the table as well. So, going to be exciting times for sure for the future of graphics. But that's enough about NVIDIA. We're going to move over to Intel as a very mysterious new CPU has been spotted. So full credit to Tom Apitek over on Twitter for this one. You can, of course, find their tweet and, of course, the previous tweets from the previous topic linked below and anything relevant to the topics in the description below this video. However, they did spot a mysterious woo 24-core Intel processor on the Passmark database. Now, the reason it's so mysterious, woo TM, is that it's a 24-core, 24-thread part, which has the Intel Genuine 0000 codename. But it's that configuration that does raise an eyebrow. At the moment, at least, we don't know of a single older lake configuration that's 24 cores, 24 threads. The maximum core configuration we have is 8 Golden Cove cores with 16 threads and 8 Graysmont cores with 8 eight threads, which is basically, long story short, TLDR gives us a total of 16 cores and 24 threads. So there's a few possibilities of what we could be going on here. Passmark just could be misreading 
the number correctly because it just can't, you know, doesn't understand what it's looking at. Obviously, Alder Lake is a very different approach for Intel. And obviously, it's not out yet, so it could very well be that Pulse Mark's just going, oh, I don't understand, and freaking out. But there's a very real other possibility that it could instead be Intel's Raptor Lake. Now, we don't know much at all about Raptor Lake because it's like the generation ahead of the generation that isn't even out yet. That's how far ahead we're talking. But it is rumoured to feature an increased number of threads. But again, it is still an odd configuration. So it might be Raptor Lake and Passmox getting confused with it, or it could be either or. Very much tough to say for sure. Now, another thing that is undoubtedly catching your eye and also making your eyebrows raise a little bit is the clock speed. 5.9 gigahertz. Now, obviously, whatever this is, is an engineering sample, so that is extremely, like, hmm, extremely sus territory. So, I think this is just a case of Passmark misreading whatever the chip actually is, whether it's Old Lake or Raptor Lake. It's kind of like, who knows, but... But still, I, I think it's really interesting to see. But let's move on to something a bit more pertinent to now, shall we? A new benchmark for Alder Lake mobility has popped up, and it has some very interesting results. So once again, we have Tom Apisak to thank for this one. And this was a brand new benchmark where we see a 14-core Alder Lake P CPU pitted against a Ryzen 7 5800H. Now again, this is an early benchmark, so please do keep that in mind before I go any further. So these benchmarks do come from User Benchmark and Geekbench 5, but they have yet to be confirmed by Intel. And another thing to consider is that these tests were performed on Windows 10, and... There have been rumours, of course, that Windows 11 is going to apparently have an improved scheduler to properly give Alder Lake the support they actually need. So, but all of that out of the way, what do the benchmarks actually show? Well, it actually shows the Ryzen 7 5800H coming out victorious against the Alder Lake P CPU. But once again, early sample, Windows 10, you get the idea. But let's talk, talk actual specifics, shall we? Starting with the Geekbench. 5 submission. In terms of specifications, we can see 14 cores, 20 threads, and 24 megs of L3 cache. We saw a single core score of 1,258 and a multi-core score of 6,831. To directly compare that against the Ryzen 7, we see 8 Zen 3 cores with SMT or simultaneous multi-threading and we see a score of 1,338 for the single core and 7,063 for the multi-core test. So to put that into some kind of perspective, basically at present with these results, the 5800H is 60% faster in single thread and 3% faster in multi-threaded performance. But obviously there was also a user benchmark result. The Alder Lake P system reportedly scored 160 points in single core and 773 in the octa-core benchmark, whereas the Ryzen part scored 133 in the single core and 898 in the single, uh, sorry, in the octa-core benchmarks. So on this result, we do see something different, Sin higher single core performance, but we do see Ryzen beating the Intel part up to 16% in multi-core workloads. So we should by no means take these results as final, like, yep, yeah, pack it up, boys, this is the final results, this is the uh, pegging in terms of performance and uh, who's going to win, quote-unquote, out of Alder Lake and Cezanne. Obviously, this is very early, we should wait for final results, but still, interesting stuff to get an early peak, as I'm sure you'll agree. So I think the battle between Ryzen and Alder Lake is actually going to be really interesting. Obviously, Alder Lake is a significant departure from Intel's usual architecture methods. And I'm curious to see how this helps Intel in the future. Obviously, AMD have just been on an absolute tear over the last couple of years with Zen. You know, it's just been crushing it and Intel have struggled to keep up. But will that continue? I guess time will have to tell. But thank you guys so much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, it does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time.